I'm doing this for the culture. I'm doing this because I want to see you succeed. So and there like, I was thinking that KRS had issues with the police. Yeah, right? <laughs> woo, woo. That's, That's the sound of the police. And a lot of people were like, yo, yo, KRS One, you're not hip hop. What I would like to find out is if the situation with BAM has affected the temple of hip hop in any way. All the bullshit that separates us, we need to get that shit out of here. <laughs>
And so uh, I'm sure there's a lot of conditions and there's a lot of political upheaval. There's a lot of, there's a lot of times right now and, and things going on in the world where, where it's just people are uprising, man. Like in Iran, you know, and, 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 and um, you know, you hear it all the time in France, even in Britain and in Canada. Like, you know, there's just so much madness, especially over the past couple of years with COVID and everything too. Like, you know, it's just humanity's being tested you know in, in in so many different ways and so i think that you know um you know all you need to do is really look into hip-hop and realize that there's there's voices that represent that you know all from different areas in the world and and um you know hip-hop does it in a masterful way where we're able to you know give people that platform to to speak for the community to be the voice for the voiceless so I don't think it changes, you know, it's like throughout the span of time, humanity, there's always been people who wanted for, to fight for what's right. And now maybe things like took a different shape, but it's still this, the spirit and the energy of it is the same, I think, you know. And, and do you think people understand, like, you know, you said about hip hop being the voice of the voiceless and all that. Um, do you think people actually understand how to fight against the oppressors and all that using the music? Or is it just a case of people just blurting out whatever they feel without having any real direction? <laughs> There's so much madness, you know, in this, especially in hip hop too. Like so many people are attracted for it for various reasons. Like we talked earlier, a lot of people don't even know what they're doing, where this comes from, what the original intent of this culture was and intent of, of doing that. And it's all good. You know, everyone has the freedom to do what they want to do with their life and and to use art in the way that it was meant, you know, to whatever they want to use it for. But, um, you know, we're dealing with a specific culture here, you know, with, with, with principles, with, with heritage, with um, history, you know. And, and so when you're able to tap into that, you know, it, it, it gives you a different side of yourself. Maybe you don't realize that existed there, that now you have, you know, once you know better, you can do better. And with, with hip hop, I mean, if you want real hip hop, you just go to where the real MCs are, to where the real writers are, to the where, where the breakers are. They're always f performing with with a with a message, with an intent. You know, sometimes it might not be super deep. It might just be a little different form of inspiration. But yeah, it's 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 there. And I mean, that's what I try to do with my lyrics and my music. I just want people to understand um, that for someone who is as young as you are, mm -hmm. like you've picked up the knowledge of hip hop from a place of deep understanding. Word. So whatever you say, you know, is, is pretty much coming from one of the higher forces. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, your, your education is, is deep. It's deeper than most. Most people just listen to the music and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you've gone in and you've studied all of that. Yeah. Right? So we're going to talk about that a little bit later because I think it's important to understand what hip hop is. Yeah, definitely. You know, not everyone understands it. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. Most people are busy doing rather than mm. learning and, and being. And being, yeah. yeah. Drop of jewels, man. <laughs> with regards to your own music, before we get on to talking about the Temple of Hip Hop, uh, with regards to your own music, what, what have you actually put out there that people um, can go looking out for? I mean, Work. have you worked in any groups? Mm -hmm. have, you, have you done productions? Have you been involved in event promotions? Mm -hmm. Anything like that? So my background, really, I started off as a fan, you know, like I would write my own bars and stuff like that. But I always felt like I was more of like a supporter of the culture and like hip hop and trying to understand it. Because being an, an immigrant in Canada and um, just being the type of individual that I was, I was an awkward kid growing up. Um, I, I always felt maybe like an outsider. And so like I tried to, I spent time like supporting it, you know, supporting local acts and you know, getting in this vibe where it's like, I was really like taking in a lot and like observing and doing this. But the more I spent around it, I was like, well, you know, hip hop is really, you can't observe hip hop. It, you got to do it, you know? And, and so I started getting it busier into it, get started doing things. But, um, what, what I re when I really started getting busy was going to shows you know, and connecting with people. And I did a lot of this type of stuff, uh, interviews, videography, uh, f filming live shows and stuff like that. And the more I built up my network, the more I kind of found my peoples, you know. Uh, shout out to my brother Legitimate back home, Broken Records, you know, the Schoolum crew and stuff like that. Um, 
that was my first opportunity to really record was to go to his his place where he used to have his studio at his mom's crib and you know really get down with MCs that was around the year 2004 2005 and uh you know uh he put me on you know what I mean he put me on to to the to the local tapes that they were making back in the day the old English mixtape you know what I mean that was the first mixtape and that one was big for the whole neighborhood for the city and um you know so get, getting involved in that and then doing the videos um you know traveling back to the city to Toronto because I was based out of Barrie which is just a, a, above Toronto where I started at but I moved back to the city to Toronto Mississauga and Brampton area and uh I just you know started getting really involved in 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 doing the video thing really man um we have a series that I've worked on with uh with a brother named Born King BK Born King Magnetic Allah and uh Knowledge Yourself DVD series so we interviewed a lot of big acts that came in Raekwon RZA uh Sean Price rest in peace uh, ill bill just the list goes on and so I got into that a bunch of that came out a lot of it didn't um, I always pursued my MCing in the meantime getting busy I worked with different cats on different uh, features here and there across the city and then in 2010 2011 I met my Polish crew and um, my best friend Pablo shout out man um, he introduced me to to my boy legitimate who put me on the first you know, uh, mixtapes and, and projects that he was doing in Barry, but I met him through Pablo. We kind of separated our ways. And then when we, we both moved back to the city and reconnected there, and that's where we we met our Polish homies. We met a bunch of cats that were doing shows and bringing Polish artists from Poland to Canada. And uh, we just naturally created our own crew, Consortium, KSM, Wielka Familia, and uh, we, uh, for 10 years, we rocked together, uh, put out m various uh, albums and, and mixtapes. And, uh, you know, so I was always doing that. And um, right now I'm working on my solo project, you know, my, my solo album. I, I put a couple tracks out here and there. People can see those online. But, um, you know, that, that's, what, that's what I'm focusing on right now. Do you want to give them some titles? Yeah, so um, for, the, for the group for stuff? For the projects, yeah. Yeah, so we have um, Povrut do Kozheni, which is the, the Return to the Roots mixtape that we put out in 2016. That was probably the last project that we put out together. We have um, uh, also the 2012 mixtape, Consortium 2012 mixtape. We had uh, Black and White album, Czarne na Białym. Um, that, that was Consortium crew. And shout out to the whole Vierka Familia, which was uh, like our, our rest of the crew around the main members. Uh, and it was a big movement in Mississauga in Toronto for the Polish community that we that we connected with. So we had um, that album was the first one. Then we had Północne um, Klimat, which means like the northern climate, you know what I mean? Which was like our vibe that we were creating. And um, uh, also shout out to the pr producer Red Eye. He's a big homie that gave us a lot of beats and, and production. And we, we worked with him. He had a couple of solo projects that we were on, Red Eye versus the World. And also, uh, probably one of my favorites was um, the Consortium Unyesheni album, which was means uplifted, you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, that was that was dope. All original beats. Yeah, y'all could check that out, man, online. Have you worked with KRS One in studios? Yeah, I I've been in the studio with KRS One, and you know he invited me to to uh, perform on certain tracks. And uh, I remember at that time. You know, uh, it was really dope being in the studio, just watching him work and being there with fellow Temple members. Um, shout out to Steel Mountain, Desire Nobility. Shout out to um, Ambitious as well. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, I was offered it, but uh, to be honest, I dropped the ball, man. You know, like he gave uh, me this you track. Ready. I wasn't ready, man. I wrote something completely different. And he was like, I remember he broke it down to me. He's like lifted, man. He's like, I'm actually going in a bit of a different direction on this track. But check this out. I got this beat for you. This might work with this, you know. And, and um, you know, um, he, I, I was given the task to go back home. I rewrote my, my verse. I did whatever I did. And I, and, I, and I sent it off. But they were on tour at that time. And so things moved really missed quick. missed the it's, opportunity. Yeah, I missed the opportunity, you know. But, uh, but, but actually, it was a really dope experience, nonetheless, to be there. And what, what was a dope experience? Missing the opportunity. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> I had to get you on that one. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, nah. That, 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 
you know what? In a funny way, it kind of was because it made me be like, man, I don't want to miss that opportunity again. You know. So do you think that'll come again? Oh, I, I, I totally have faith in that for sure. You know, and actually, just even being on this tour, I got an, an, an I got an opportunity to, to MC with with the teacher with KRS One itself. So, you know, even though that's not a recording. It was still the performance, you know. It was still doing the MC. I mean, come on, so, just the experience of being in the studio with the man himself. Yeah, you know, that's that's something else. Yeah, and I and and actually, um, I got to spend my birthday with uh, with the teacher in the Temple of Hip Hop in, in 2020 as well in the studio and working on the Between the Protest album, which is super dope, man. Um, and just being there, being part of the creative process. I didn't contribute any lyrics to it, but just being in the studio, sharing some of the ideas and, you know, helping out uh, to make sure things can happen and, and um, c connecting some of the producers to, to the teacher while we were making that album. That was dope, man. If we just go back a little bit. So you've, you've already discussed it, you know, KRS1. Mm -hmm. um, how did you meet him? Yeah, words. So, um, you know, all this actually came through the Temple of Hip Hop which is uh, our uh, hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society. That spells mass, you know, ministry, archive, school, and society. And we teach that you, we, we preserve hip hop by preserving the hip hopper, you know, the one who produces the culture. That's who we need to take care of and make sure there's okay for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. That's so important. So important, man, because we, th we think about preserving, like, um, you know, Run DMC's, Run DMC's shoe or, you know, the turntable, which is all important. Those are all artifacts of our culture, you know, but if we're not preserving the hip hop, you know, this, this is where we're at right now with, with so many of the youth being lost. We need to get back to the essence of that, you know? Obviously, you got the love for what we do, the culture, mm -hmm. yeah, and then you got industry. And industry seems to win in this, be winning this war at the moment. So how are we going to beat that? Seems to be. You know, um, and it's, it's really all perspective, you know, because when you start to look at the things, when you start to change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. change. Facts, yeah. right? And so I'll go back to answering your question. So uh, that is what the Temple of Hip Hop is. And I myself, um, KRS came to Toronto in 2009 and did the 20 year anniversary of the Stop the Violence movement. They were there for a whole week. We're at the city hall, at the universities, in the streets, uh, uh, Jane and Finch in the hood, um, a Scarborough community centers all over. We did the whole tour. And I remember just being like having my job that I that I just got telling my boss, I'm like, yo, you know what? I know I just got this job, but I got to go and like spend this week with this rapper. He looked at me <laughs> like, yo, you're crazy, bro. You know, uh, but I had to do it. I, I, I loved I loved the opportunity. And so I went there. Uh, for the whole week and I and, and I and I participated in these events and I found out about the Temple of Hip Hop. They released the Gospel of Hip Hop soon after I started studying it. I got in touch with the members that were the elder members and you know they they do events all the time and, and things where people can plug in from the community and I started studying and, and then doing my own events that I were promoting Hip Hop History Month, Hip Hop Appreciation Week and That's the month we met. That's where we met, you know, yeah. so it's history now, yeah, you know, yeah. it's real hip-hop history. And for anybody who doesn't know um, when Hip-Hop History Month is, can yeah. you tell them? It's November. November every year, that was started by Zulu Nation. Um, hip-Hop History, Hip-Hop Appreciation Week is the third week of May. And, um, and you the know, birthday is August 11th. August 11th. August, uh, yeah. Yeah, 15, 20, Those are the three Avenue, dates to remember for hip-Hop. That's it, man. You also have Rap, uh, rap Music Day, which is... Um, uh, the third uh, May third every every year, and that has its own history as well. So we have holidays, you know. We have the hip hop holidays, um, but but uh, so I, I took the initiative to start doing these things. The word got around that I'm putting in work, and you know naturally when you when you put the effort in, you know opportunities come, right? And so I got the opportunity to go out to Los Angeles in 20, uh, 2018. And, you know, it was like a big gathering for the Temple of Hip Hop. KRS-One invited us all out there. We did a mini tour and we got to know each other and, uh, you know, I officially became down with the Temple of Hip Hop during right. that time. So what is your actual relationship with him? That's my mentor, man. That's like I was telling uh, uh, the brother driving over. That's like my hip hop uncle, you know what I mean? But he's also 
that's the teacher. So this is a brother that's mastered what he does. He's mastered his craft and he and he's also like a caretaker of the culture. He's one of the architects of hip hop culture. He really took the time to create the Stop the Violence movement, the Heal organization, Human, Edu Human Education Against Lives. Uh, one of the first brothers to teach hip hop in universities. Uh, put out the first book that mentioned hip hop as a culture, The Science of Rap, 1995. Um, put together the meeting of the minds conferences with all the all G ogs and pioneers and really approached how do we you know start hip-hop as a culture and so he's this figure that is like he's really doing the work the cultural work and so to me you know appreciating hip-hop for what it is i kind of like look at him as like i'm the apprentice and this is what we do at the temple of hip-hop as an apprentice you come in and you learn to become a master you know um you know you you can become a teacher as well you know but you got to learn these things that we that that we teach and 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 really you become you grow your character of who you are yeah. and so to me krs1 is he's he's like you know the master and i'm the student you know what i mean and that's how it's going you know if you didn't have that in your life right now where do you think you would be as an artist <laughs> I have no idea, man. Would you just be following a blind path? I believe that my soul led me to this path. It was meant to be. Like, I, I, I know that I couldn't, there's something in me that couldn't just live a regular life. I think that certain people are born for, for certain things, mm. you know? And like, um, KRS-One is where he is because he followed his purpose and his his soul, you know, towards where he is. And um, I mean... If he was, if he didn't do that, I don't know where hip hop in general would be because there's so much that came from that. That's deep. That source, you know. That's and, actually deep. You know, so yeah. um, I don't know. Because man. a lot of people learn a lot from his records. Yeah. You know, and and the clarity that he comes out with is just mm -hmm. like you know, some people just focus on skill rap. Some people focus on trying to be technical and whatever. But KRS has always been, you know, everything message technical skills mm -hmm. what it's everything Word. do you know what i mean Word. he's he's the epitome of what hip hop is really isn't it yeah i mean he came up with the phrase i am hip hop and a lot of people were like yo yo krs1 you're not hip hop like you think you're only hip hop but it's the 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 the, the, the philosophy is is like you, you are hip -hop. everybody it's like i am god i am hip hop it's like i am god isn't it that's yeah. that's the same mentality you embody that you you know that hip hop is not over there somewhere like Hip hop, the environment turns into hip hop when we go yeah. into the environment. Well, well, any, anybody who, who embraces the culture is hip hop. Yeah, that, man. That's how that's how I see it. You embrace the culture, you are hip hop. You know. Um, you know what I mean? And and you don't need to justify yourself to anybody. Nah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you stop being busy doing, and you start being busy being. Back to yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like that's you be hip hop. I am hip hop, and. And so much, um, so much philosophy came from this from this man's life and his approach to hip hop. And I mean, he was he was uh, he was there at the birthplace of hip hop. Uh, Fifteen twenty Sedgwick Avenue is right here. Then you have the little park between fifteen twenty and sixteen hundred. And uh, KRS One, he grew up. He spent he spent he, he didn't grow up in that building, but August eleventh, nineteen seventy three, he lived there at that time. So you know, when, when Cool Herc came out. So he was there at the birthplace, That's you know? That's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, that was, you got to go online and, and do your research and see, you know, the details of, of all of that. But that's like, that's providence. We call that providence. It doesn't just happen randomly, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, shout out to the teacher, man. He's, he's always going to be the teacher. And like, you know, uh, I'm grateful for him and his family and, and like all the other people that came from that stream of, of, of that you know school man so the the industry seems to be much more powerful but that's you know that's 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 the 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 illusion you know uh, hip hop really is just so many hip hoppers like yourself here in london and and the uk doing what you're doing and like you're just getting started with 521 man so where this goes in 5 10 years like everybody knows that the wax shit with time it falls off so oh, yeah you know what I mean? It's like if you have a real solid foundation, you keep building and, and, and that'll last forever, man. So. And, and, and these journeys that we go on, I mean, like you, you just randomly mentioned a couple of words, busy being. Mm. right? And we also talked about KRS-One, yeah. which I'm sure is going to carry on um, in the conversations. But I've crossed paths with both of them. 
Right. And I was fortunate enough to get a picture with both of them at the same time. I saw that. You seen that? Yeah. Yeah. So the, these are people that, you know, I looked up to from very early on. Right. I mean, Busy B before KRS, Word. obviously. Word. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, back in the days of Wild Style when we were listening to Little Rodney C and them guys rapping Double Trouble. Right. If you want to know the real deal about the two, do you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah. like, come on, man. Classic. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's mad to think that I'm sat here with somebody that was with some, or is, is with somebody, and that person is mentoring him, and he was at the birthplace of what shaped so many of our lives. Indeed, yeah. I mean, how does that make you feel? You know what? Um, I can't feel normal. I mean, you know, like, um, I, I, I'm blessed. You know, I'm blessed. I give thanks every day, and like, you know, I've dealt with depression and different things in my life and, and, and different points. But like, you know, when you really when you really get to take a chance to look at your life and, and, and what it really means. And like, you know, I, I'm a spiritual person. You know, I know there's a there's a higher force in it. And I, I really believe it guides us. That's why I say in the beginning of my track that I play G.O.D. means going on daily, guiding our direction. It's like, man, you you see that there's like or get out of dodge. Get out of Dodge. Get out of there. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm just like, man, you know, life, life is beautiful like that. If you're able to, like, get in this flow, you know, following life's outcome willingly. Shout out Minister G. Simone, the acronologist. If you're able to get tap into this source of, like, you know, whatever your passion is and whatever your purpose is and you're able to, to, to live it, then you just, you just rise, you know, in your purpose and your ability. And uh, I feel blessed to be able to be here. And that means that I'm around these people that are that are greats, like the teacher KRS One and and all the other students and 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 his his apprentices. Excuse me. <coughs> We're both ill. Yeah. Illmatic, man. I'm right here with it. So um, <laughs> now you got me coughing. Yeah, man. You know, we, we two sick MCs, man. <laughs> and we just passed it on to each other as well. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, man. <laughs> So it's 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 uh it's um it's a blessing, man. And um, I'm I'm I, all the other students that come up, come up, like I'm just so inspired for the future, bro. Because there's some serious serious like MCs, uh, b boys, b girls, graffiti writers, DJs that really know what this is about. And uh, at the temple, we're building strong. So I want to see. But what, what about the, the ones that are so dope, but mm -hmm. they don't actually know what it's about? I mean, you know, y yo. They can tune in, you know. Uh, so tell them where they, where they can tune in and how they can tune in. Yeah, no doubt. So you could check us out um, if you want to rock with the Temple of Hip Hop at Official Temple of Hip Hop on Instagram, also on Facebook, and also um, on YouTube. You could type in Temple of Hip Hop. We have our channel there, and you could check that out. Um, and also uh, the Temple of Hip Hop org for the, all the official online stuff, you know? But what you really need to do is connect with us when, you, when we come into your town. Holler at us, holler at me, holler at the different members that, that, you, can, that you can get in touch with and, and do something. That's how I got started. You know, we started building and, and creating opportunities locally for ourselves and for our community. And then somebody that doesn't know can come in, connect, really learn what this is about, raise up their own value, and their own, you know, uh, character and everything, and you know, make 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 your life worthwhile while you're yeah. living here, and like really stand on those principles and build yeah. yourself up. And you know what, these guys are approachable. Um, I met him at the Flavor of the Month event that went on last week, and um, yeah, it was literally we just standing outside talking. Didn't even realize he was connected in any way to KRS One, and we just got talking. Next minute, I'm calling him saying, yo, before you leave the country, do you want to come and do an interview? And then I find out he's connected with KRS-One. So, you know, this is how things happen, isn't it? So, Guiding they're, they're our direction. Guiding yeah. our direction, you know, yeah. it was meant to be. Yeah, like, like you said, November as well. You know yeah. what I mean? It's that and, and, and flavor of the month is a historical jam, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's a historical jam. It was started by DJ279 and it's been going... As far as I'm aware, it's like, well, it hasn't been going because it was not going for a long time, but it was started, I think, 1990, 1991. Yeah. And it was it was the event to be at. Yeah. You know, so what a place to meet. Yeah. It brought hip hop together. That's what I'm saying. In Hip Hop History Month, you know, and it's like, man, I, I was like, 
the vibe there was dope, man. It was I, sick, wasn't we it? had to leave early because our driver for the tour, he's been like really working his ass off, you know what I mean? And so it's like that was our day off. But we wanted to go to the flavor of yeah, the month, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And uh but so we had to cut early, but I met you there just in time to meet you and meet a couple of the other OGs and just like that shit inspires me, man. Mm. When I see the, the the elders come together and there was young people there too. There was a brother that wasn't even twenty years old. You know what I'm saying? And he was like and that's our duty to pass this information on to these Straight. youngers and show them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a guy on recently called Pro Focus, Indeed. who you know, you've done a track with him Word. as well. Shout out Pro Focus, man. We got a track coming out called Visions. Uh, that was the topic for Hip Hop Appreciation Week in 2020. And, uh, yeah, really dope, really dope track. Shout out Pro Focus, man. We build, me and him, we were in contact. And... Uh, and yeah, man, I'm excited about that too because he's a dope MC. And yeah, he is. He that's an example him. of like yeah. the, the 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 next generation that's coming, you know. Yeah, so. and he's so willing to learn. Yeah, like he's he's one of those guys. Mouth shut, ears open. Mm. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, perform and, listening. Word. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I I have a lot of heroes that I look up to uh, when I see MCs and stuff. And you happen to be in a, at an event that was going on that hosted. Two of my heroes, uh -huh. one of them being KRS and the other one being Big Daddy Kane. You know what I'm talking about. Ooh, yeah. So the versus battle. Now, let me, let me tell you what I think happened. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. I think um, there should have been mics put into the audience so you could see and capture the real reactions to mm -hmm. see what was going off and what wasn't. Now, I wasn't there, but all I know is I'm watching it live and KRS was just killing it. And I'm a huge fan of Big Daddy Kane. Word. Right? But I just felt yeah. like KRS just, it was all about KRS really. And mm. Kane, to me, is one of the sickest performers I've ever seen. Mm. I've stood on stages with him on two, three occasions. Yeah. Um, and I've been to his other shows when I haven't been performing. And, you know, same as uh, KRS. Mm -hmm. But for me, KRS took it. Man, it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, yeah. It was, it was crazy. I mean, I've never been to a stadium like that to see a live concert like that, you know? And so that whole atmosphere, like I remember rolling through New York City earlier that day, all the cars were lined up, bro. Like this was an event for the whole city. Like people were h hyped about this, man. And, um, you know, when we, when we were there, it was really dope. I mean, Big Daddy Kane is also a master of what he does, you know? Straight He's up. He's still rocking to this day, man, and, and rocking up. crowds like crazy. So... It's not that it wasn't a, a fair match or anything, but um, KRS, man, you you know, you got to watch it. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. And and the, 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 the thing is, like, they had the technical thing, like you said, with the mics. So when you're in person, a lot of people didn't catch what we caught there in person. Like, the whole place was, was, was wilding, man. It was jumping. It was bumping. And people were singing his tunes. Uh, KRS's tunes and so you might not hear that when you watch it uh, through the TV but it was dope man and and of course Kane gave a good gave a good performance too it was it was can't really take nothing away from Kane not at all nothing. not at all you know but, but KRS is just some other level though isn't he yeah I mean he said at the end what he said if you need to rewind the tape and go see it then you need to see it man you know what I mean but he he said yo this is KRS one and he everybody knows where he comes from and what he stands for and 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 what you know the claims that he makes he backs that up man and so ain't nobody stepped up and tested it he did what he did he came in there we came out victorious and you know still number one man so i'm still number one yeah and two three four, four and five, five. <laughs> wait yeah <laughs> man this is this is what it is and it's that joy that love and appreciation for the craft that just keeps you going man you know a lot of people over time maybe they lost that but maybe <clears> they weren't in it for the right reason or whatever but you know, you go to a KRS One show today, still, it still crushes it. Still, and he's and out. he's and he's never stopped recording, has he? He's like, this, nah. I mean, there was, I think, the longest period was maybe four years, mm -hmm. uh, maybe between two thousand and fourteen and two thousand and eighteen or something. I don't know the exact dates mm -hmm. um, where there was no album, but then all of a sudden, every year he's dropping another one. That's right. Like it, he's, he's got over twenty albums, bro. Yeah, he's got like almost twenty five albums, studio DL, albums. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And like a bunch of DVDs, a bunch of books. Uh, documentaries, features on all kind of movies, like, yeah, his his list is long, man. So taking it back to you. Yeah, man. 
knowing all of this and seeing all of this, what are you taking on your journey to elevate your journey? You know, whatever I can, whenever my opportunity comes on, uh, up, I jump on it. You know, I've been able to... Well, you didn't really. You missed an opportunity you said earlier. I mean, I tried. <laughs> I just, it didn't turn out. You know what I mean? I wasn't on the track, but, you know, I, I did write my verse. I did spit it to, to KRS and it just like, you know, it, I didn't get it at that time. Sorry, let's put this into perspective. How does it feel? that you are sitting there, literally a meter away from KRS, and you're spitting a verse to him, and he's acknowledging your existence. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just like any other MC, man, because he's the MC's MC, and of course, like in my head, like in the beginning, being around the temple, it's kind of like, damn, yours yeah, is but, KRS-One. But your situation is different, though. Yeah. Because like most people will be just another MC going and spitting a verse, and right. KRS will respond, I responds. But with you, yeah. you got that link, that connection. Oh, like that? Um, yeah. So how, how does that feel? Like you can share these moments with yeah. pretty much one of the greatest ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it puts me in a situation where I know it, I don't have the type of access, I guess, you know? that others do, so I really try to value it and I try to make sure that I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, that I, I got the character to, to, to be around that man and around the temple like that, you know? Um, but uh, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing, but it's also a burden in the sense of like, it doesn't just come by being a fan, you gotta really be, be that person, you know? And uh, that's something that I take on as my, as my duty, as, a, as my honor, you know? Um, definitely, so. But it's like, you know what it is. When you're around KRS, you can't not stay around him and your skill level goes up. It's got to always elevate, you yeah. know? And so I take that like that as well, you know? Okay. It's either yours has got to elevate or you got, you got to pray that his one goes backwards. Oh, that ain't <laughs> happening, y'all. <laughs> you know, I said I've done a couple of shows. Um, well, I've done a few shows where KRS was there and one was in Germany where Word. I met Busy B uh, as well on the same stage we did the performance. Word. and. At the back of the stage, there was this uh, Hip Hop Declaration of Peace mm -hmm. banner, a massive mm -hmm. banner that was on the stage. That's right. You know, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, no doubt. Um, 2021 was the 20 year anniversary of the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. For those that don't know, the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace is um, it's a document that over 300 OGs, pioneers, activists, um, Local politicians, uh, heads of religious uh, organizations came together in New York City and they created these 18 principles that are a guideline for hip hoppers to live a prosperous and, and healthy and good life moving forward. And so we got that together. We worked on these principles for over a year. And then when the time was right, people got together and we went to the United Nations, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, in, uh, in New York City, May 16th, 2001, and we pre presented that at the United Nations and they recognized us in a, as an official culture of, of peace and prosperity in the world. So that was a big one, you know what I'm saying? We hit with that and it was like, yo, we officially here. And we've been officially here but when you get the recognition of, 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 of the outside world like that, you know, you can do things differently in that realm, you know? And so we've been standing on that and uh, the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace, I advise everybody to go check it out online. These are principles that guide us, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of the earth, doing business the right way, making sure you take care of your elders, having someone that is a hip hop cultural specialist in your organization to make sure that you know, these corporations ain't out there running around doing the wild shit. There's 18 principles that guide us to, you know, move this culture forward in the, in the right way. And it was done by all the OGs and like the pioneers to come, come together. So this is something that the Temple of Hip Hop spearheaded, but it really it was all of hip hop coming together, supporting this and making it happen. We mentioned the Stop the Violence movement uh, earlier on as well. Mm -hmm. And I felt when that record came out that what you're talking about now should have started happening back then. It should have happened back then. Yeah. What's your view? Um, you mean the Stop the Violence movement? Yeah, because that, you know, that was pretty much like a declaration of peace, wasn't it? 1989, yeah. Yeah, yeah so if you study the Temple of Hip Hop, you'll notice that these things, one thing led to another. Um, after 1989, to Stop the Violence, we inspired the West Coast to do all in the same gang. 
And I know you guys had something in the UK that oh, you there was did stuff too. Going on, yeah. It was yeah. inspired by yeah. by these type of movements, and um, and then 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 the Heal Project came, which was we we studied and understand where does the violence come from? You know what I mean? Why is there violence? Why is there so much violence in the community? And so you know, um, we raised over six hundred thousand dollars that was donated to literacy programs doing the Stop the Violence movement, but also a lot of research came up out of that. And that led to HEAL, Human Education Against Lies, which was like the next step, step in the evolution of like, okay, if this is where the violence is coming from, we need to heal so that the violence does, isn't coming. But why do you think the violence is there? There's many reasons, you know, unfortunately, and the violence is still there within hip hop today, you know, the ignorance. And it's unfortunately when, 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 when the call goes out, those who don't listen, they don't get the, the, the benefit of doing what's right, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, there's there's lots of reasons why the violence is st still there. The system is the way it is. There's still oppression happening. There's still, you know, the, the corporations pushing ignorance on the people. You know, youth grow up looking up to, you know, idols that may be not the best example for them. You know, there's, um, you know, there's just general ignorance in the streets, man. And, you know, everywhere you go, it's like, you know, the world is right now is, is so fast paced. People don't necessarily take the time to, to slow down and realize and learn. Goes back to that. Be in being, tune with themselves. Doing. Exactly, right? Um, so, you know, fa it's, it's harder to be a family nowadays. The family structure is being more pressured to, you know, come apart because of everything that the world is pulling you towards. Do you not feel that that's a purposeful thing, though? That that's, that's that how the world is. That's happening by design? Yeah, it's happening it by design. It is indeed. But at the same time, if we if we know about that and we don't unite to make the difference, then it's almost like we deserve okay, it. Okay, so man. so you, as a student of KRS One, if you could look into that camera, yeah, and explain what you think needs to happen in yeah. order for this design that they've done mm -hmm. or created is broken, so that we can unite as a people and rise against all of this stuff and go back to appreciating life and not money and. Yeah and material things word yo i appreciate money and material things too but what my what my man is trying to say is what we need to realize is we need to all the bullshit that separates us we need to get that shit out of here and we need to come back together and really stand on that unity you know what i mean because there's force there's 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 power when we come together man you know when you got the fist together you can't really you know take that apart but when you have one finger whatever you know what i'm saying Chain is strong you know what I'm saying? So when we come together and like, there's so much egoism, you know what I'm saying? In, 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 a, lot of, in a lot of movements. So I think, you know, it's dope to, to big yourself up and be dope as an artist. But like, yo, hip hop culture needs to come together as one. And, uh, you know, that, that can speak to the alliance. You know, that's what's happening right now too. the hip hop union. There's a big movement happening right now in hip hop. But uh, yo, man, it's just like respect life, man. Respect your brother. Respect your sister. Respect the elders. Respect the next generation that's coming. And yo, there's so much. Hip hop is so powerful. If we united in the world, which I believe we're gonna do it, then yo, we can really spark this change everywhere, man. And you know, right now we we building. You know, this is this is the groundwork being laid after yeah. 50 years of hip hop. We really, you know. The next 50 years is going to define us so much. When we're talking about um, the Temple of Hip Hop, there's also the Zulu Nation. That's right. What is the connection, if there is any? Yeah, Zulu Nation came before the Temple of Hip Hop. You know, um, go online once again and do your research. Zulu Nation was there first, um, you know, teaching peace, love, unity, and safely having fun. They, 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 they threw a lot of the jams in the beginning. You know, they, they laid a lot of the foundation. And, um, you know, we come, we come out of Zulu, Zulu saying, yo, hip hop needs to do this. It needs to get together and it needs to, it needs to make the change that it needs to, you know, for these corporations not to come into our communities and take advantage of us, which is kind of what happened, you know. But we, we heard that call and we responded to it and, and KRS-One created the temple of hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we, we started to stop the violence as well you know so it's like we heard that the call that they're making and we went forward and uh zulu nation you know what i'm saying has a lot of history and being in new york you know you knew that that was a force that was there that was you know the gang violence and that shit turned more into like hip-hop is what it is now you know that's zulu nation i'm curious did krs start the temple of hip-hop as a 
reaction to Zulus to, to have his own thing? Yeah, no, I think so. Um, you know, um, yeah, the Temple of Hip Hop was was the the intention of it when it came out. It 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 did something that Zulu wasn't doing. We what, took, what was that? We took it to the cultural level. We started asking questions: If hip hop is a legitimate culture, what do we need to do as the culture to to preserve the culture? You know what? You know we started presenting these questions, and and we did the stop the violence movement that brought everybody together. We did heal that brought everybody together. You know what I mean? We did these type of things, and um, the meeting of the minds, and bringing the Declaration of Peace. To the United Nations, you know, this is this was our work. Zulu Nation was doing what they were doing, you know what I mean. And all respect due to Zulu Nation, uh, but hip hop played a bit of a different. Uh, Temple of Hip Hop played a bit of a different role, and you know we're still going on and, and doing what we're doing. And you know we have the gospel of hip hop at the Temple of Hip Hop, which which lays out the blueprint for you know how to become this. Uh, uh, um, you know how to live hip hop on a higher level and have a higher character within hip hop, and so that's what we base our movements off of. Okay, and and what is the end goal of the temple? Yo, man, br <laughs> spread hip hop as far and wide as you can, and and you know allow people to live their life. You know, um, but what about people who don't care about hip hop? What you know or, is this? Um, you know, we can't kind of base our entire life around we can because yeah, it's yeah, our yeah, life yeah, yeah but the average person word hip-hop doesn't mean nothing to them yeah no you know, I mean, so how does that involve them i think hip-hop has to become sovereign within itself first we have to be able to become our own uh community and nation and and, and stand strong on that and then we can inspire others really because right now we're doing it like i run a i run a cleanup back home every sunday you know what I mean? And we go out into the street, we have youth, we have, you know, um, community members come in, people who aren't hip hoppers, but it's a hip hop based program. They come in and they get inspired. And I do that based off of the, the Declaration of Peace. There's a principle that talks about respecting the earth and, and this is our only home. So for anyone who, who is not hip hop, this is deeper than hip hop. That's what I, I'm trying to get I, at. I think so, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a way of life. You know, I think, you know, you being who you are, you can inspire people by the drive you have within, you know, living your hip hop the way you live it, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the ultimate goal, I don't really know what the ultimate goal is because we're not even at the point where we're like, what do we want to do as a society? So KRS has never said, said to you, the ultimate goal is this? No, I don't think there is no ultimate goal. It's just going to keep going and going. But I mean, we do have goals like where we want to open a hip hop city. Okay. And, and we're working on that right now. Yeah. You know, the same way you have like Little Italy or Little China somewhere else. Yeah. Why not have Little Hip Hop? Yeah, of course. Why you not? You know, a section of the city where it's like people can come and they can I learn. mean, considering how many lives it's changed. Yeah. That's it. Come on, man. That's, that's a no-brainer. It's everywhere. It's everywhere in the world. Every in, inner city in the world has hip hop culture at the core of it where it's like, and that, and we kind of like dictate where style and, and trends and popular things come from, right? So... It's 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 everywhere in the world, and it's 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 a force. It's a powerful force. Um, so you know, hip hop city. We call it hip hopia, and it's in it's in the works right now. You know what I mean? And um, you know, when we go from there, if people see how a, a city like that is being run with like clean energy, like good good food, we can grow ourselves. You know, maybe we can work a different economy out that's more like skills based or whatever and just more inclusive for the community. You know, maybe we can inspire the world to do that too, you know. And, 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 and if we show people a cleaner living, yeah. a better living, a more peaceful living, yep. uh, what's there not to enjoy about it and yeah. gravitate to? Yeah, you know, so this is this is our hopes and our dreams. And I actually believe that this is our ancestors' hopes and dreams too. When the, when the civil rights movement was being happened, you got to go back to Dr. Martin Luther King. He talked about, you know, uh, the different families of, 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 of uh, humanity coming together mm -hmm. and not being defined by their past, what they did, but like starting something fresh and new. And that was, if you study when hip hop came, that was just after... Um, Martin that was King. being yeah. taught, yeah. you know, and so it's the direct lineage, yeah. and I, and I believe that we are doing the work of our ancestors. We're bringing the families of hip hop together, 
um, of humanity and, and, um, and we're, we're creating this, you know, because it doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, Spanish. Can you, can you spit on the mic? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Can you show me some dope graffiti? You know, like, can you show me that you can hustle and create an opportunity where there was none? That's hip hop, man. Yeah. And if and if if I can get along with everybody like that, then we can we can all get along and create something that's like, no government can stop this, yeah, no yeah. corporation and like. Yeah, and 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 he won't have oppressors unless the guys who are creating all of this become the oppressors. Yeah, and you um, know, you know, and there's always a possibility that, that can happen, can't it? Because there needs to be some kind of policing, I guess. We have to be. We have to govern ourselves, you know. But that's where it comes to like building your character up to a level where it's like you don't need somebody to govern you like the government's trying to tell us how we should live in the police because we're at a state where it's like, you know, you, you, your, your character is at a point where it's like you, you're, you're able to show others what that example is. And so technically we should be able to govern ourselves, but we do have to be organized too. We can't just be all free yeah. thinking and free living and no rules like otherwise i'll be in your house taking all your food and all kinds of stuff then i would have to stop the violence or start the violence <laughs> you know what i mean talking of stop the violence though um you know there's a lot of madness going on in the world right now yeah man and a lot of it's on the streets and um you know it's it's, it's a bit crazy yeah so with, with krs starting to stop the violence movement how does he feel about all of that now i mean what can he do to change things he tried yeah I mean, he tried and certain people listened and other people didn't, you know. And so you see the hip hoppers who was down with that movement. They're still around right now, yeah. still living, living a good life, doing things for the family, doing things for the community. It's, it's, it, it turned out that it was paid off to listen to that message. You know what I mean? And so, but other people that were like, ah, they're preachy, man, whatever, like, get that shit out of here. I'm not going to lie. I've had conversations with people where people have kind of gone, ah, oh, you know what? Uh, I lost interest in this artist or that artist because mm. they were preaching. And, and I guess some artists have, have said that they felt that KRS was preaching. Yeah, but, for sure they did. But yeah, they, they say it all the time, bro. Um, but you got to listen to what he's preaching and why he's preaching it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sure you've had to deal with that. How do you deal with that? Or how does he deal with that? Yo, let us roll up to your city, jump up in the venue, crush the shit. And if you, if you, if you, if you ain't feeling it, then, you know. Then you can cuss we, us all you want. <laughs> you can cuss us all you want, man. Yeah, but you know you're going to smash the shows anyway. It, it, I've never seen a Calrae show not get smashed. Yeah, you saw him on Versus. You saw him on, you got to go check the latest albums, man. Still crushing it. Still coming up with, like, Can You Dance? This track on, on the last album, I-M-A-M-C-R-U-1-2. Man, he's bringing back the different dance styles and like being aspiring to like a next generation now. And like, that's a style that you don't hear cats doing necessarily, you know, so it's uh, it's dope. I mean, you know, there's preaching, but you can't just sit there all day and preach, too. You got to have fun. You know, you got to hit him with the bars. You got to come with the lyrical style. like and, and bring fun into it, like you said. Like yeah. Just, you know, enjoy it. Don't look miserable. Yeah. I mean, don't sound miserable. <laughs> you know, it's like, man, I don't want to just hear you giving me lectures all day. Like, yeah. come on, man. You know, so, and, and, we, and we got that, you know. Yeah. We, we do that. And that passion and that joy and that love is still here after the 24th or 25th studio album. So, I mean, all you got to do is listen to the new music, man, you know. But, uh, hey, man. Every, every different, different uh, strokes for different folks, man. You know what I mean? Whatever your cup of tea is, man. <laughs> Where do you see hip hop going? Oh, uh, man, I, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Like, even for myself, what I'm doing in my city and what, we, what we're doing with hip hop culture in my city, oh, man, I'm really excited. I, I, I see this idea of, of hip hop city taken off. And, like, we're in talks with the mayor of Liverpool um, here in, in England. Uh, shout out to my brother, uh, Andy Johnson, who put us in touch. And um, everywhere we go, it's like politicians grew up on hip hop now. You know what Yo, I mean? Bro, they, we are the driving force. Yeah, man. And so they, they, they know this growing up, you know, and it's like my, uh, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City. He came through 1520 Cedric Avenue, August 11th this year. He said, officially, we're celebrating 50 years of hip hop next year. Was he wearing shell toes? Ah, uh, that is the question, right? <laughs> Yo, Eric Adams, man. 
Uh, Mayor Eric Adams, salute. He was. He was. You know, uh, from, from what I from what I remember, man. But it was all hip hop in that spot, man. And um, you know, so it's like politicians now. Um, we had last year also um, resolution three three one, and Chuck Schumer, Senator Chuck Schumer, come forward and say, "Yo, we're making uh, hip hop's birthday uh, a, 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 um, a, a national holiday." And hip hop history month and the hip uh, uh, hip hop appreciation month, you know hip hop recognition month. My bad if I don't remember exactly what that month is called that they designated, but you know so senators, mayors, councilmen, like do it all from Lord of the Undergrounds. He's now a councilman in New, in New Jersey, you know. So they see and understand like a vision of like hip hop city, like. You don't have to dedicate a whole city, but maybe a section of a city. Yeah. And like, you know, so... I mean, considering me, how much hip-hop is given to the world. Yeah, it's given and given, man, you know, and uh, and how much is taken from it, man. And it's like, you know, we were just trying to survive and do this because the madness in the streets, you had to have a way to, to express yourself and survive. So, mm. you know, hip-hop's given so much and it's, and it's, for my community, I know it's done a lot and we're only like starting to get older and get wiser and more organized too and you know so you know um we're helping out the mayors and the police that's, force that's like we bring the peace love and unity and the, and safely having fun to the community and, so and there like, i was thinking that krs had issues with the police yeah right <laughs> woo, woo. that's, that's the, the side of the police <laughs> no doubt man you you know and it's like to this day man like you know Yo, you, you, you got fucked up law enforcement out there too. Let's not bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. There's still corruption out there. It's real. And people's lives are fucking, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to those who, who've been taken out that way, man. So we, we still got work. We still got opposition. But, you know, once again, it comes to us coming back to us and being who we're supposed to be so that they can't even have a chance to come in and fuck it's with about, us. It's man. about having that shield around you, isn't it? Like, yeah, indeed. You know, it's, it's like... If you've got your immune system built to a certain level, nothing yeah. can really get past it. That's the whole idea, yeah. man. You know what I mean? So we got to get that hip hop immunity, and you see the unity at the end of the yeah. of immunity. So, what's your primary goal? Is it is it to be an artist, or is it Templar hip hop? I mean, to me, um, I kind of tie it all into one. I really like this 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 saying and this philosophy that the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And um, so, you know, being an artist, I've really taken the role of like over the past several years, being that community organizer, you know, like coming into the temple and getting these teachings and, and understanding this really put this, um, this, this spirit on me where I'm like, I really want to be in the community and raise them up because as you rise, you lifted. have to bring your lifted, you know, get an elevated man. Um, and 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 um, yeah, that's the that's the spirit with the name. That's a whole other thing, you know. But like, this is what it is. You can't just rise by yourself. And so sometimes I feel like you know you gotta. But I felt like I've I've put my you know um, goals as an artist and stuff like that on the back and like really focus on bringing up the community. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like almost even like a little selfish thing because I was learning so much by doing that. I was adding so much to my character by doing this and bringing up the community, bringing up, doing these events, supporting different organizations. And, you know, um, in the meantime, I'm always working on music. I got tons of stuff that I've released and, and worked with different artists and stuff like that. Uh, but that's been my focus. And, you know, right now I'm, I'm busy working on my solo album and um, I'm excited for that too. I can't wait to be out back here in, in, in the UK performing. And we need it. to link up again when you get back. Yeah, man. I can't even wait, man. It's like a six hour flight over here now that oh, I experienced bro, come on, it. It's nothing, like, man. Yeah, man. You know, so we're going to make it happen. But uh, I also really want to work on events in, in, in Canada. I want to be the one to bring that cultural, bring through the Grandmaster Kazes, bring through the DJ Cool Herks, bring through the Busy Bees and um you know um the different cultural pioneers and stuff like that man and, and, and you've got the links speak. to make it happen so yeah yeah do you want to so, do you want to mention your merchandise while you're here yeah man so you know i got these t-shirts right here shout out to my man b-boy bartas helped me design this polski flavor crew hip-hop saves lives you hear what we're talking about it's the fact and so um i got these t-shirts man i'm a i'm a street entrepreneurial list and, you know, um, I designed T-shirts 
posters. You know, we have um, different things as well. We, uh, you know, you, you could just catch me, man. I sell books, man. You can come to a jam and you could buy hip hop books. I got a variety of different books and stuff like that. But we got these shirts, man. You know, if you want to be fresh, grab something for your lady, for yourself. Uh, the UK loved these. When I came out here, these are, the, these are my last couple of t-shirts, really. You know what I mean? Um, back home, people supported it. They love it. And so this is just another extension of, be, of being my hip-hop self, man. You know, you, you, you want to always look fresh wherever you go. And this has a powerful message. And, um, and it helps to support this movement, you know. The more I can support myself by, by being entrepreneurial, the more, you know, we can get to our goals quicker. So... This is what it is. Hip hop saves lives. Shout out to Sage One for doing the other design. You can come check me online, and I I got all the different styles available. So that's what it is, you know. I like I like what you said there about obviously doing everything for yourself and everything because I feel like mm. we live in a time where so many people, like the multitude, have been brainwashed, and it's good to hear what you're saying because I am starting to hear more and more people unbrainwashing. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, you feel so, like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, I feel that way. And, and I talk to a lot of people that are still brainwashed. Yeah. Uh, I feel sorry for them. And I hope that one day you wake up, you open your eyes properly, uh, and, and you start realizing about the brainwashing that's going on, because it's, it's there. It's deep. With you being a student of the Temple of Hip Hop, mm -hmm. and you being young, and then you meet and say somebody like myself, who's two decades, close to two decades older than you. Word. Why should someone like me listen to you? Considering I was there yeah. when it was all starting out in the early days. So I just, I, I want you to sell yourself. Yeah. Why should somebody like me listen to you? Um, you know what? Yo, if you're feeling it, listen to it, you know? And um, really, I'm, I'm doing this for the culture. I'm doing this because I want to see you succeed in your elder years. You know what I mean? I want to see, see my elders be treated respectfully. I want to see them being shown in a light where, you know what I'm saying? They're being honored for their contributions and for what they put down. Because that shit was no joke. That shit was no joke. When we were talking earlier, you said it was harder back in the day. And in so many ways, of course it was. Because there was no foundation being laid. Nowadays, you could jump out, be a rapper, and just promote yourself on, 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 on the socials. But, you know, um, I want to make sure that um, this is what it is. You know, and so that people can understand this. And, and um I think that, that that full circle connection, it's needed, you know? And so I don't, I'm not out here to make people my fans, you know, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the public and I'm an artist. And so it's like, it's going to happen naturally. You know, hopefully I have a well-balanced audience and, and the young, the, the youth uh, are inspired and, and like to hear what I say. And the elders are as well and my con contemporaries. So... Really, that's what it's all about, you know. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we finish? I just want to shout out my people back home, uh, my whole Schoolum crew. Uh, shout out to everybody in, in Toronto, Saga, Brampton, Barrie, all my people back home in Poland uh, doing their hip-hop thing, man. Big up. Big up to all of the UK that held us down when we came out here for the return of the Boom Bap Tour. All my new friends, all my new connections, all you crazy geezers. Shout out to all of y'all, man. It's, it's all love. And just stay inspired. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you can catch me online. I'm sure the socials will yeah, be we'll there that and in all the that. Description. So that's what it is, man. Keep living life, man. You're a divine being, man. Elevate yourself. Give yourself the value that you know you deserve, man. I think you should have changed your name to Uplifted. Ah, word, word. <laughs> you, know, you know what? One thing I forgot to ask, and I need to ask this, um, because a lot of people that I know, this was a conversation piece, mm -hmm. and it's to do with BAM. Yeah. Right? Now, I don't, I don't think it's your place to answer for what KRS said with regards BAM. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to find out is if the situation with BAM has affected the temple of hip-hop in any way. You know, it's funny because when that situation happened, I kind of just came into the temple. Like, I started studying and, and, and just getting to know who's who and stuff like that. And, yo, that, that situation shook up all the hip-hop. We were all like, yo, what the... It's like, Trust you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, it, it's kind of like the pandemic. Like, nobody knew what the hell was going on when this shit hit. You know what I mean? And it's just like, what is this? Why? And, and all of that. Um... You know, and um, that it is what it is, man. Um, I know that the temple stood firm in our principles, um, you know, and we were just kind of like, 
you know, Zulu Nation is a separate entity, you know what I mean? And, and, and they have to deal with what happens in their house and, and, you know, figure out their leadership and, you know, and the way that they communicate and, you know, who's who doing what and all of that. And, you know, it was a, it was a it was a hard blow to hip hop. But at the Temple of Hip Hop, we're like, no, we, we, we know what we're standing on. You know what I'm saying? We know who we are. We know what our character is. And, you know, uh, we, we know what we do and we know what we don't do and we know what we teach and we preach and we do that by being it, not doing, not doing, you know what I mean? And so, yo, it's like, I, I think that for me to see how, as a temple, how we handled that was dope, you know what I mean? And, you know, the teacher doesn't cower away. He doesn't shy away from anything. If you really want to know, Go online and see, you know, there's, there's, there's been multiple uh, responses and written responses, video responses. It's all there. You could go check it, you know. Um, people love drama, you know what I'm saying? So they're always going to try to pick at certain things. But that's always going to be the case when you're on, on the top. People are always going to try to get you with different things. So it is what it is. I understand it's a controversial topic, but, you know, I don't think it took anything away from the temple. We've actually risen and we're still rising. So if anything had done you good yeah i mean you know we and that's not because of what happened with with the zulu um a lot of people saw the temple rise throughout that because you know we stood our ground and was like yo we're gonna continue doing what we're doing like you know zulu is zulu they have to res you know, they have to respond for themselves man and yeah. you know what i mean and like yeah man so It's uh, it, it is what it is, man, and you know we gotta we gotta continuously always rise to that character, man. Yeah, and you're always gonna be part of Temple of Hip Hop now. Yeah, man, I'm down with the Temple. It's changed my life, man, and you know what I mean. It's inspired me and given me opportunities where I had none earlier, and and helped me become a a, a better man, yo, in my life. You know the way I act around my family, the way I act around my community is like. You know, I'm proud to say that I, I took that from getting the character of what was taught to me at the temple, you know. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, all kind of people come to the temple, man. All kind of people with all kind of backgrounds and all foolishness and shit. But that's what a temple is for. It's there for you to become a better version of yourself, man. Maybe even a whole new version of yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. And so big ups to that, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm forever grateful. And you know what I mean? Let's just keep doing these things you know keep smashing these mics and keep keep doing these murals and all this stuff that's gonna you know bring out the best in you to get that joy in your life man you heard it right here so basically if you want to be a member of the temple of hip-hop then go onto the website go check it out see if it's for you and if it is then obviously reach out and you never know uh, you might end up learning a lot your life might change a lot of things can happen And uh, I think most of what I'm hearing, well, all of what I'm hearing is really positive. Where? So, you know, uh, and to see someone that is young and enthusiastic about all of this and recognizes the changes in his life, I think that's an inspirational thing for others to get involved with. And who better to have as your teacher than KRS-One, okay? But don't forget, he's got his own life. Uh, he's got his own music. He's got his own thing that's going on. So make sure you check that out. So go reach out. I'll put all the links in the description below um, and you can go uh, check him out and follow what he's doing as well. So anyway, to find out more about Lifted, make sure you follow him on all his connection pages linked in the description. Click the subscribe button, like, share and get involved in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. And again, Lifted, bro, thanks a lot for being here. Really appreciate you making the journey. No doubt, man. And, and, the, and the knowledge. Peace and much love, 521. Love y'all, man. Peace.